Good morning guys and welcome back. It is Captain Caveman here at Desire Motor Factory. Uh, there is a good reason why I haven't had much of an update going on in this place at the minute because I've been busy with many, many things. Uh, the Skyline is taking main priority. We have the GT86 is sold. We have my Chaser has sold. We have the CL80 is also sold. Uh, we also have today, which is the reason for this video is a nice little update for you just because I haven't been here for a while, is I have a new car on the way. So it's on the back of Loza. If you follow uh, Monkey London, you'll see him on there delivering cars. I've been using him for some time now. Uh, he's a good guy. So we're gonna see what Loz brings me on the back of his truck. So let's hope he gets him before it gets dark. So after a busy few days of me organizing things and talking to people about this one and this one, I have been around the world today and picked up the rear brake setup. Yes, look at the size of these bad boys. And this is the rears. This is to go with the fronts. I mean, the, the fronts are eight pots, the rears are six pots now. So it's gonna be a refurb on all of these parts because they are really, really crusty and they're not going on the car like that, unfortunately. So refurb all of this, get it all back together, and then throw it back on the car ready for paint. <sighs> so, time lapse up I suppose, and uh, get this thing done. Yeah, we have everything else here now ready to rock and roll. That's the rear calipers Ready to go for paint when the paint finally turns up So we all know the wheels on the skyline look a little something like this uh, Clearance has always been quite tight on the uh, the calipers as they are eight pots. They're rather large the rears with the new wheels on only just clear I mean it is tight. Uh, I've got a problem with the fronts Yeah, the, the new wheels I need spacers with them. They shouldn't have spacers. The new fitment on the wheels is a 18 by 10 minus one. Now that fitment gives me pretty much the same fitment as my original wheels without the spacers on. Now I've got to run these spacers with an extra three mil shim in order to have clearance on these calipers. Uh, this is where it's touching, just on the top. So I've shaved all those down. <sighs> part of the joys of what we do. Yeah, look who's just turned up. 
the man, the legend, the myth, Loza. All right. How's it going, mate? You all right? Yeah, not bad. Delivery for the Desire Motor Factory. Yes. Look at that. Did it drive on all right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't drive. <laughs> Is that what it is? Is it a world of diff? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's got the skyline diff, hasn't it? Skyline diff and welded. Seems a bit overkill. Loz, well, thank you very much. No worries. Gentleman and a scholar. I look, look forward to seeing what you're doing with it. Yeah, we'll see how it uh, gets along, see if it's as clean as the other one or if it takes as long as the other one as well. On <laughs> thank you very much, my man. You take a steady. Cheers, man. Right, let's have a look around this thing. It's got dark, we have chatted a lot. But to be fair, I do love seeing our Loz. He's a good guy. I'm gonna have to get a light for this. It's way too dark. So we have a light and we have action cam. We have lots of stuff in the back of this car all over the place, but it's really nice. Uh, 180SX seats. Interior is nice and clean. Dash isn't cracked. Flared arches. I like this. This is gonna be a cool little build. I think I need to see the engine bay. Let's do this. It's open. It is open. It's a really nice clean car. Oh wow. I knew it was clean. I didn't think it was this clean though. I am thoroughly impressed. This is very nice. Ah yes, no wiring. Uh, there is a wiring loom to be fitted onto this. I have that in the car, I've been told it's there anyway. Uh, but yeah, this is really nice and clean. I'm over the moon with this, look at that. A clean S13. But I haven't had to spend ages welding up or sanding or anything else. Nice quality rad as well, so nice coil. Pink rock covers. Oh, I can see powder coated subframes. Solid bush on the steering. Let's have a look, see what we've got underneath. We have Skyline brakes, five stud hub conversion, coilovers of some sort. Mm, can't see what they are? Nope. What have we got going on underneath here? Adjustable everything. Cool. Let's have a look at the rear. Wow. Somebody has spent a lot of time and effort on this. It looks really nice and clean. Again, adjustable arms all over the place. HSD coilovers. Skyline diff. This exhaust system, no rust. I like it. Works wheels, always a winner. Skyline brakes on the rear as well. Yes. Wow. Doesn't look like this is going to take a lot 
to get it all pretty. Set of side skirts, fit the wire and loom ECU bits and pieces, paint, and we should be pretty much done. I am very, very happy with this. A few panels over there missing, I see. Everything should be in the car though. Oh, it's a shame it's so dark. I can't, can't picture the, <laughs> the very pink door. Like it looks red on the camera, but this is very pink. Like that's very much like Yashio almost pink. Very cool. I am very, very happy with this. This is a car I brought from Garage 21 up north. And man is true to his word. It is exactly how he said it was. He said it was clean. It was his own personal vehicle. It is his baby that he was building for a while. And it is a really nice clean car. And the guys up there do a good job, obviously. Look at it. It's getting spoiler. It's very pink as well. It's D-Max. It's a D-Max spoiler. I'm not really up on my spoiler game. Tell me if that is a D-Max spoiler. I think it is. That's cool. So the next day brings the sun and an exceptionally busy day here. But let's have a look at this thing in the sunlight now. It's not too pink that door, I suppose. There's a couple of things that I need to get done on this. Uh, first and foremost is going to be the wiring loom. It needs to be fitted on this, so I'm going to set the time lapse up for you guys. I'm going to get this wiring loom on, get the EC on, and see how close I can get to getting this thing started up now. Like, I want to get this done. I want to get it running, driving. I want to see what this thing's like. I'm nervous. So here we have in the box of goodies the ECU and oh, my personal favorite wiring. Okay, let's get this fitted. It's not hanging about. It's gonna suck. And just like that, we have the engine wiring harness now on. There is a distinct lack of something that I've noticed whilst I'm here. I've, uh, we haven't got gearbox wiring loom. The lower half of this, I do not have. Also, for the more eagle-eyed viewers, you'll notice there's no battery on this. <laughs> so I'm gonna need to get a battery for this and relocate it to the boot as well, because there's no room to put a battery down in there. Um, also gonna need to get the washer bottle fit back in there so it all fits properly, but yeah. So it turns out this is not gonna run today because I don't have that engine wire and loom that I need for this on the bottom half. I'm not gonna rub the one for mine as it's all been chopped around and made specifically to fit that chassis with that type of wire that I've got. This is all gonna be nice and standard, nice and easy. So, uh, the hunt is now on, I suppose, to try and find a wire and loom for a 180 SX. Hmm. That's a little bit of a bummer. I'm a little bit bummed out, but I wanted to get this running today, but not gonna happen. Uh, what I did also find though, whilst I was here looking at bits and pieces, is the side pods for the front bumper and the rear spats that were missing as well. And there's a wash bottle as well. Everything else, uh oh, that doesn't inspire confidence. Uh oh, what have we got back here? Okay, I'm gonna have to ring the guy and see what's going on with this, see what's happened. What has he done? Has he changed a fuel pump? Is there a fuel pump in it? Wiring is... Okay, that's just grime. Okay, I'm gonna have to get onto him and see what he's got to say and see if he can shed any light on this before I start delving into things. Other than that... Yeah, that's nice. Just a bit of surface rust. There you go. Noise. 
So, since this video is a complete mashup, I've actually had some parts delivered. So, let's get this one open because this is bits for the scar, and we'll get this all open and see what we have stashed away in this particular pallet. that we all want to see. <laughs> and there we have Greddy TDO6 25G. Oh, so pretty. Nuts and bolts. More nuts and bolts. Induction piping, interglue piping, banjos, everything necessary. Ah, oh, nice little chip as well. Although that's going to need to be, uh, yeah, cleaned up. Well, that goes back on the skyline. Would you look at the size of this Johnny? That's a good size turbo. It's obviously going to need a refresh before it goes on there, but yeah, the fundamentals of getting to 500 plus horsepower right here. So after uh, having a look at the editing side of things for this video, I've noticed that it is completely all over the place. It's supposed to be a nice, simple video for you guys to uh, see the car being turned up and see what we're going to do with it. Uh, it's turned into lots of other things and bits and pieces as well along the way. So. Without further ado, I think we're going to end this video here, uh, try and get back on track with the next one with a little bit more of a focus on what we're doing. And uh, yeah, let's see what we get done in the next one. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.